Good evening. The federal government has expressed its anger to Egypt over the sentencing of Australian journalist Peter Grester to seven years in jail. The government summoned an Egyptian diplomat in Canberra to the Department of Foreign Affairs to receive an official protest. Foreign Minister Julie Bishop has said the government will file a formal request to the Egyptian president to intervene in the court proceedings involving Mr Grester. He and two Al Jazeera colleagues were given sentences of between seven and ten years for spreading false news and having links to the Muslim Brotherhood. Egypt faces international concern over the sentences, with the United Nations Human Rights Chief Navi Pillay saying she's alarmed by the rulings. And meanwhile, Prime Minister Tony Abbott has moved to assure the Grester family everything that can be done is being done. Of course we appreciate the rights uh, of the Egyptian justice system uh, to make its decisions. Uh, yes, we understand the need of the Egyptian government to maintain internal order and to crack down on extremism including the Muslim Brotherhood but but uh, it is important that there be due process uh, it is important that uh, decisions be made on a fair and just basis so we will be talking uh, to the Grester family uh, we will be talking uh, to the Egyptian government about what we can do to try to ensure uh, that Peter Grester comes home as quickly as possible. Peter Grester's father has described the Egyptian court's decision as a slap in the face and a kick in the groin to Australia. Eurus Grester says the family will consider all options regarding an appeal, but at this stage he's having difficulty sleeping and thinking straight. He says it's hard to explain how upsetting the news is. We're not usually a family of superlatives, but I have to say this morning my vocabulary fails to convey just how shattered we are. Although we considered a range of other outcomes, you can never prepare yourself for something as painful as this. However, we are absolutely determined to continue this battle until Peter, as well as his colleagues, are all out of prison. The federal government says it has abolished the family visa category to increase the number of skilled migrants and contributing parents allowed into Australia. In the budget, the government cut the family visa category, which had allowed low-income Australian families with overseas parents to bring them to Australia without a fee. Immigration Minister Scott Morrison says the government believes it's making the right move. He says the government is keeping the contributory family visa, which requires a fee of thousands of dollars. Independent MP Andrew Wilkie and Palmer United Party leader Clive Palmer have tried but failed to vote down the government's budget in the House of Representatives. Mr Wilkie and Mr Palmer were the only two parliamentarians in the 150-strong House to try to block the budget. Mr Wilkie is urging Labor and independents in the Senate to block supply. He says it would not bring down the government but it would restore some fairness by making them rethink their budget cuts. Papua New Guinea's former anti-corruption chief is stopping short of asking Australia to suspend aid which is in response to the controversy surrounding PNG Prime Minister Peter O'Neill. Last week, PNG police issued an arrest warrant for Mr O'Neill to answer questions about an ongoing corruption investigation. Sam Cohen was head of the PNG anti-corruption body until the Prime Minister disbanded it following the allegations. Mr Cohen flew to Canberra to meet with Foreign Minister Julie Bishop today and to explain the issue as a threat to the rule of law, not a political matter. He's not saying how he thinks Australia should respond to the visit, but is pointing to Australia's aid spending. And Miss Bishop told Sky News she's also discussing the matter with PNG's Foreign Minister. I'm making contact with the Foreign Minister Rimbing Pato uh, to register our concerns about what has been happening in PNG over the last few days. This kind of political volatility, volatility doesn't assist PNG in um, advancing the interests of their citizens. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe will address the federal parliament in Canberra on July the 8th. In a rare move, MPs will be recalled to Canberra for a special seating of the lower house. Prime Minister Tony Abbott and opposition leader Bill Shorten will welcome Mr Abe, the first Japanese leader to address an Australian parliament. The last time parliament was recalled on a non-sitting day was for United States President Barack Obama's speech in November 2011.
The National Imams Consultative Forum is meeting with politicians in Canberra to discuss how to stop what the government calls the radicalisation of young Australian Muslims. Mr Abbott and Mr Shorten have welcomed the Imams as they attended Parliament for question time. Mr Abbott says religious tolerance plays an enormous part in a successful multicultural country. He says the Imams have a vital role to play in helping stamp out the growth of what the government termed violent extremism. Tony Abbott has told a coalition joint party room meeting the government that stopped the boats, as he puts it, will stop the jihadists. About 150 Australians are believed to be fighting or training with militants in Iraq and Syria. The federal government is discussing tougher measures to stop them from returning to Australia. During the debate, two MPs backed the cancellation of citizenship for any dual citizens involved. Immigration Minister Scott Morrison told the party room most of the Australians involved are not not dual citizens. A new study has found Vietnamese children are working up to 18 hours a day, often without pay or rest breaks. The study by Monash University and the Children's Foundation Blue Dragon examined 57 households, of which almost three quarters has sent at least one child to work in Saigon. Leading researcher and Monash University professor Susan Kneebone says low-income families are promised their children will undertake fulfilling paid work, but she says the reality is quite Quite different. The children are expected to work very long hours, they're not given much opportunity or any opportunity for rest and play, often they're fed scraps or sometimes in the case of children who were flower sellers, they were having to sleep during the day and, and work at night. They can be beaten and kicked. And now to sport and coach Ange Postacoglu says he's disappointed after Australia finished its play in football's 2014 World Cup today with its third straight loss. Australia lost to defending world champion Spain 3-0, although Spain also bowed out of the World Cup because it lost its first two matches. Postacoglu was not happy with how the team's efforts ended. Yeah, look, it's uh, disappointing. Uh, yeah, you're right, we started bright enough, but... Yeah, you've got to pray credit to them. They're a quality team. And obviously, um, once they got uh, dominance in the game, we, we looked a bit jaded and a bit tired, to be honest. And now we'll look at tomorrow's weather. Morning frost and sunny in Perth and 19. Adelaide, a few showers and 16. For Melbourne, showers and 16. Showers increasing in Hobart and 12. Canberra, showers winding at a top of just 10 degrees. Wollongong, a windy day, sunny and 17. Windy and sunny in Sydney too with a top of 19. Newcastle, similar conditions in 19. In Brisbane, sunny and 22. Cairns, also sunny and 26. And in Darwin, a dry and sunny. Sunny day in a top of 30. And that's the latest from the SBS Radio Newsroom.